Hi, this is Deborah Atkinson, the voice for fitness and the author of Navigating Fitness After 50, your GPS for choosing programs and professionals you can trust. And I wrote that book for you, but I also wrote that book for me. Selfishly, I've been in the fitness industry for 28 years, almost three decades. I've grown up with the fitness industry. So I started back when Jane Fonda was big and Jackie Sorensen was just before her and we were doing choreographed routines to music. So when the chorus came on, we did this. When the verse came on, we did that. There are so many more modes than there ever were so that there are options for anyone. If you have knee or ankle or hip issues, there are ways that you can exercise now that you couldn't before. So there are still options available for you, which is really exciting in this era where fitness is not a choice. It's not if we do, it's when. When will we get started and how will we exercise? That's why I wrote the book. So one of my chief goals in writing this book was being able to help you as a consumer identify who is a qualified and a credible personal trainer or fitness instructor so that you can get a safe, effective exercise program and get what you really want out of it, which is better quality of life. That's what it's all about, ultimately. And you're a better mom, you're a better employee, you're a better boss, and you're just here doing whatever your purpose is and enjoying that every day of your life. That's the ultimate goal. So what's in the book, who needs it, and why should you read it? Do you really need to hire a trainer? It's no longer, are you certified? But it should be, are you certified by A, B, C, or D? Really the top tier certifications. So if you've been exercising for five, 10, or 15 years, and now you're in your early 50s or 60s, your exercise program needs to reflect the changes that your body's made over time. And so that you can keep up and not settle for a lower level of fitness, but make sure that you're getting the right dose of exercise for the results that you want and the body that you live in today. So we literally look at strength training for baby boomers and beyond. I'll look at cardiovascular training and look at flexibility. Better yet, I talk about mobility and the means of growing and exercising through your full range of motion and how important that is in the whole scheme of things as you're growing older and you want to stay as active as possible to do those activities you've been looking forward to for decades. How do you pull that all together? I'll address that in the book and by no means is this a book full of pictures or illustrations or exercises specifically for you personally to do on a daily or weekly basis. There are some descriptions of what a week's worth of cardiovascular exercise would look like, what a week's worth of strength training would look like as you first begin, as you progress, and as you progress even further. So you'll have an idea of what to expect and how to pull that all together, but it won't specifically tell you do A, B, and C. That really is something somebody needs to meet with you one-on-one -on -one to do in order to give you a great exercise prescription. So the third section talks about some of the things that come to greet us in our 50s or 60s that we weren't quite expecting. So heart disease risk factors, arthritis, osteoporosis, back pain, those are the key issues and conditions that I've worked with in my older adult population over the last 28 years. It's by no means an all-inclusive or an extensive list, but it's the best start without knowing you individually and being able to talk to you about your issues. We'll talk about those risk factors and how meds that you might need to be on in order to manage those will affect your exercise program. Talk about specific things that you should look for if you're working with a trainer or going to an exercise class so you know whether or not that's actually meeting your needs. You're gonna find a section in the book that talks about brain health. So as we age, a lot of us are concerned about dementia or Alzheimer's disease and keeping that at bay or in control. And some of us are concerned about memory and 
losing our keys or forgetting our wives at church, you'll find that motivation is a big key. And it's not a big key just when you get started or are thinking about it. It's a big key every day, the rest of your life. I'm a regular exerciser and I have been my entire adult life. But every day there are temptations and there are other things that pull my time, my energy, my money, and other ways that I could be using all of those capacities. So motivation is there for all of us and it's continuing. Every time you sit down to a meal or a snack or you're tempted to and don't necessarily need it, you need some motivation and some reason for what it is that you're gonna choose to do. So I'll address some of those key things and how you can make exercise a more pleasurable experience for you and how you can tie nutrition to a part of that pleasurable experience. The very end of the book is gonna tie in some key resources for you. So if you're working with a personal trainer, great, you may be set and happy. There may come a time when you're looking for one and I'll give you a couple of resources there. There's always Google, but this may give you a little bit more in-depth picture of who's out there and can you trust them? So I want you to go get the book for very little money. You're gonna get a lot of options and a lot of answers that will help you live better, live longer, and shorten the gap between the length of your life and the length of your healthy life.